What's up, church family? Hope you all had a good weekend. Me and my wife had an amazing weekend. Had an awesome time at church yesterday. Uh, got to celebrate our three-month anniversary today. So thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Um, just got back from a funeral a couple hours ago. I have got, had to go <clears throat> say goodbye to a sister of ours. A sister in the kingdom in Christ, and uh, it was uh, it's definitely different. Me being in Christ now, uh, funerals are different to me because I don't uh, I don't like uh, it's like it's just different. I don't mind you know me personally doing the tears and having feelings and you know letting that sorrow go and just we're allowed to do that it's just the part i don't like is just the injury i can i can see on when people ain't founded in christ it really it really messes them up because they think we die and people are dying and like we ain't gonna get to see them ever again christians don't die actually nobody dies you either go to heaven for eternity or you go to hell for eternity so I'm just a fine line right there with me on funerals and just if uh and they did it good uh, brother uh, the preacher he he did amazing he did an altar call at the end of it so that's what I want me and my wife want an altar call to, uh, at our day when we cross over because we just want to remind people that um if you want to come see us again when we leave here you want to come through Jesus so it's it's a bittersweet comment i mean it's especially for the ones that ain't never lifted a bible or went to church or been saved or i might as well be speaking japanese you know what i mean a different language it's uh but i got to see people let go and, and it was a healthy process for me i'm speaking from my lane personally uh, um it was different funerals have been different since i met jesus um I look at it as, uh, they graduated, they, they went to heaven, they graduated, and they went to heaven, so, from glory to glory, amen, but let's pray in real quick, and we'll go over a couple things, and Father God, thank you for my channel here, thank you for the church, thank you for you, and Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, and, uh, thank you for giving us an exit door when, when the spirit of fear does come at us on these types of days, and when we lose our heroes, and our parents, and, and a sibling, or, or a child, or, just thank you for being, thank you for sending Jesus to give us strength in these times. And we can lean on you guys and, and use our Holy Spirit to, to, to shoo away, you know, thoughts that ain't for us. And, and thank you for that, Dad. Thank you, thank you, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for you. Thank you for your provisions. Thank you for your grace and your mercy, Father God. And we love you. Help me say what I'm fixing to say. Be what you want me to say, not what I want to say. I love you. And it's in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> no, I did. Uh, it reminded me of a few people that I'm kind of uh, trying to help, you know, help pick them back up and keep going. You know what I mean? It reminded me of a few, of, a few buddies that's lost some people within the last couple of years and just have chose not to um, go any further. They just, most of the time, that they, they get mad at God. That's ninety nine percent of it. They get mad at God, and then, but all it is is, is 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 when we're not founded in the truth, a fear comes, and lies come with fear because it's from the enemy's camp, and then he mixes our brain up and and has us hating on God and Jesus, and whenever God's actually the one that made that person for us, you know. So we should be thrilled and happy on them days. I, I get it. Like it's 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 kind of a, you know, I'm gonna be terrified. I'm, I'm I, I need Jesus just like you guys. You know, my mom's gonna leave here one day, so I'm gonna cry too. But I am gonna try my hardest, and I mean that. And I'm gonna stand by that. I'm gonna I'm gonna lean on Jesus, lean on God, lean on the Holy Spirit when that that spirit of fear tries to tackle me over that, because I know it's a lie. And it's 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 kind of like a giant you know what i mean it comes in like a giant because once that fear strikes it, it it just rolls over into 
stress and anxiety and unforgiveness and but um the reason i speak on this is because I've, I've lost my grandma at a young age and and i got fearful and uh lonely and and just you know looking for love but i thought the whole time god was doing that to me so i was kind of ticked off at him you know just chose not to talk to him i wasn't like cussing him or nothing i just didn't understand him so i just stayed lost and confused and i puked that stuff all over everybody when i lost my grandma at like 16 i was 16 and a half but man i rolled around in the de in, in in the meth scene and in just sin after sin after sin after sin man hurt a lot of good people uh in my younger years and just i know i'm forgiven for that stuff but i was pretty evil man pretty evil with stealing and cooking meth and just running around just living life as one big old party you know but god's helping me clean that up we're cleaning that up we've already cleaned my part up I'm, I'm going around town now and trying to help clean up what i tore up you know what i mean so i think that's the christian life too you know once you meet Jesus, you just kind of start seeing things for what they are, what they really are. And that's what I feel with with death. It's uh, it's not death to me. It's it's crossing over. So it's a lie in itself. When people say die or die, he died or death or whatever, it's it's a lie in itself. So I don't even bite on none of that. But. Um, I confess it too, though. You got to confess your fears as sin because that's rebellion. You're not supposed to be fearful. We're in Jesus, so we are made with a spirit of fear. So, whenever, how many times does it say fear not in the Bible? A lot. Like, I think over 300 times, 365 times or something like that. Fear not. I mean, it's, he wouldn't have put it in there that many times if it wasn't a rule, he is. You know what I mean? He's, he's, it's not a, it, it, he's, he's just being literal. Don't fear because that goes against what I'm trying to do for you. It goes against why I sent Jesus and the Holy Spirit for you guys. Don't fear. When you get in fear, you jump, you, you lean on the Holy Spirit's knowledge and wisdom. And you shoo out any spirit that don't belong there. And they'll show you how to do that or they'll get you with people that will show you how to do that, you know. Because once that fear jumps in and locks our brain up and goes to our heart and we're locked up, that's a stronghold. That's a stronghold. So just remember that, man. It's it's uh, it's vital to confess those fears and repent, you know, uh, for believing any of that stuff. Believing that God did you wrong or God took something from you or he didn't he didn't do none of that. Everything's already set in motion. Everything's already going to happen the way it happens, you know. And God is good regardless. So. Once they got, I got saved, and they just really helped me with that. They, they helped me forgive my dad that never showed up, forgive my mom that went to prison a couple times, and uh, abandonment, uh, just fear. I was looking for love, you know what I mean? And I was also scared of it, too, because I've never really had it as far as, like, just, you, you know, I'm not saying my mom don't love me, or, or I'm not even, I've never met my dad, I'm not even saying he don't love me. I don't know, you know. I, I mean, I, I don't know what he thinks. I know my mom loves me, but, like, I don't, I don't go off that no more, you know what I mean, as far as like, it's not up to them whether I can stay happy or joyful, it's up to Jesus and God, so when things go wrong with me, I don't have to call my mom every five minutes and be like, mama, will you help me, daddy, will you help me, I can't, what am I going to do, and that goes to Jesus now, it goes to God and Holy Spirit, I, that, that's a lie, man, that's a lie, it ain't coming in my heart, it ain't coming in my head. That's a lie. I want to see them guys again. I'm going to see my hero again. It's a lie, dude. A lie. So, mm -mm. don't believe it for one second. Uh, it says in James 4, 17. Uh, <clears throat> Sorry, guys, let me get there real quick. Borrow my wife's phone. I like to bring scripture with what I'm talking about because... Dad's opinion matters way more than what I got to say about it. I'm just a news anchor for heaven. I'm going to tell you what I've been through and what all's hurt me. And I, it's, it's, it's a challenge to get you to open them Bibles and see for yourself. Because we live forever in Jesus. He's love. Love trumps all fear. 
Remember that. I'll get you a scripture on that too. Uh, we got James 4. Sorry guys, her phone don't operate like mine. 417. <clears throat> I'm so sorry, guys. I meant Psalms 34.4. <laughs> Bear with me, guys. Psalms 34.4. Psalm 34.4. I sought Jehovah, and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. So when fear struck, this is, this is David, this is King David. So when fear struck King David, uh, this is one of many times it struck him. He was in war a lot. So when it, I mean, when it struck him, he, he always called to the Lord. He always called on Jesus. He'll, or, uh, he didn't have Jesus yet, but Jesus was coming. But he called on the Lord. Uh, then they could talk straight to God, the prophets and, and you know. The chosen select from God that had a straight communication with him. So, um, every time that spirit of fear tried to strike him, he would tell God about it. And God would deliver him out of that fear. And that's what I'm trying to get to you. I had once, I, once I got saved, I had to just, uh, do a bunch of repentance for believing any of that about my grandma, uh, my dad, my mom, abandonment, being alone. God's never left me alone. So all those cases that the enemy had built up in me through my lost life, my old life, they were just kind of like festered and like going off in me, you know what I mean? And, and he had built this one big old unforgiveness in my heart, you know? And Jesus came for all forgiveness. So the minute we catch ourselves in any unforgiveness over anybody, we are being rebellion. We are in rebellion. We re are being rebellious. And rebellion is as witchcraft, so I just, you know, I don't, I don't toss around with that no more with, with fear, because, and, and it's, it's a rule, we don't, we don't, um, we're not allowed to, to think like that, it's just not in the code book of, of Father God's, it's not from our camp, heaven's camp, enemy's camp, it's not from God, so when we feel things that are not from God, we have to confess it repent for it repent means change your mind and go back the other way repent means instead of letting that offense take you to places that you know are mean to, you, you become mean to people you become just this short tempered and like things are just bothering you it's because you've got a stronghold on you and it, it won't let you let go of stuff and you have to have jesus to do that to be able to repent and let go and be fully delivered of this stuff so um and the second one claim god's promise of forgiveness and go on with our lives so I mean, we have to claim what we did what we thought was wrong you know what i mean uh, confess it repent and then we uh, the second week we claim our promises it's it's we aren't condemned in christ so when that stuff comes hitting us you got to remind them, you have to confront the fear the fear ain't just when you wake up it's gonna go away you have to confront it you have to confront it in the name of jesus Move away from me. You have no more rights to be in my life. Any demon power commanded or any demon power connected to this, to this unhealthy unforgiveness, I command you to get up and come out and go straight to the abyss in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. And that's, you rip, you rip strongholds out like that. If you feel any kind of crud trying to take off on you and manifest stupid, silly, just garbage, Manifest as in make you mean, make you unforgivable, make you do things you don't want to do because you want peace, you want joy. We're programmed to want that. We're programmed to, to want Jesus. So don't kick against the river, man, or go back against the river. Stay with the flow. When that stuff hits you, just get off me in the name of Jesus. Mm -mm, that ain't truth. Nope. You have no place in my mind. Matter of fact, Father God, I confess and repent for it believing in anything satan's got to say to me in the mighty name of jesus christ amen you just i mean you just get off me 
and three uh, or two uh, and it's psalms 91 11 it's uh for his for his commanded army angels to protect us wherever we go amen so when we're claiming god's protection and i mean and god's promises uh you tell the enemy that i got promises you can't mess with me i'm protected i'm guarded so and three we work on a day a, a deeper a deeper intimate relationship with god i i do the five five and five uh, five minutes pray five minutes read scripture and five minutes praise I do way more than five minutes, but I start people off with five, five, and five every day to put that armor on. Your armor is in your head. That's where these strongholds are taken off. So when you get up and, you, and you're focused on that stuff and you're wanting to communicate with God, you're wanting to hang out with Him and have a relationship with Him, He will put this stuff in your head and your heart through His Holy Spirit. But you can't have none of it unless you come to Jesus Christ first. See what I'm saying? So, I mean, there's levels here, but just bear with me. And I want to remind you when Joshua and Caleb, when they went over to uh, the land where the giants were, 12 went over, including Joshua and Caleb. But them two were the only ones allowed to go into the promised land. Remember that. But 12 went over. But when they came back, the 10 had negative reports and Joshua and Caleb said, we can take them. Because the 10 was looking at the giants over there that had remember the big grapes they brought over and like the 10 came back it's like dude we look like grasshoppers compared to them i mean their heart just wasn't in it they was not seeing god in the situation like david did with goliath i don't care how big this dude is my god's bigger so and caleb told the group when they came back because they did a renaissance mission and they came back and caleb and joshua was like Psh, i ain't listening to them 10 man i said we can take them remember that was the only two that took to, to to roll up in there but i mean later in the promised land but just to have that like that attitude and like that dad checked their heart father god checked their heart big time he said caleb and joshua looked straight at these big giants and said my god's bigger but the other 10 came back and said we're going to get squashed man notice how when one little fear thing comes in like it just it it's fear for everything. You know what I mean? It, fear to a point where we'd rather stay home than go out and be, I mean, like, close ourselves in our rooms in a box with the shades pulled and, like, just living in the dark. Fear. That is a lie. It is not from God's kingdom. I challenge you to open them curtains up, dust that Bible off, and get back in truth. Get back aligned. He did, though. God's seen their heart, man. I love that part about Caleb. Be, be a Caleb and Joshua today. When you see a problem or an obstacle, when that spirit of fear comes to you and says, guess what? Remember that person, like that person we're having a funeral today? You ain't never going to get to see him again. Well, you better get away from me in the name of Jesus Christ. I live forever. I'm going to heaven. I know where I'm going. I've read my Bible. I've read my Bible. I know what it says. We win. Remind them that. And in 1 John 4, 18, we've got, bear with me, guys. Um, 1 John 4, 18. I really want to go over these scriptures with you. Just fit right in line with what I was thinking today. 1 John 4, 18 says, there is no fear in love. But perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath punishment. And he that feareth is not made perfect in love. That means if you're getting, if you're letting fear in, if you're letting fear in, you're being a rebel. God don't, we ain't made of fear. We have Christ. We are like many Christs. Christ wasn't made with fear. We don't have fear. So when we bite on that, we roll around with it for a week or so. You're being a rebel. You have to you have to set that at Jesus' feet. Set it at his feet. He'll trade them ashes in for beauty. So, and he's telling us right here, uh, because fear hath punishment. Because fear hath punishment, that means if you step off into it, I mean, Jesus is love, right? He came and conquered fear, 
unforgiveness, everything that you, your hardest things you're ever going through today. So if we're not in Jesus, Jesus is love. Love conquers all fear. So if we're not in Jesus and we're not feeling that love conquering, conquering this fear right now, then maybe we need to ask ourselves, are we really in Jesus? Are we, re are we opening our Bibles? Are we trying with this stuff? Are we, did we just say the Vietnam prayer 20 years ago and just called it good? Oh, you're going to heaven. But how's that worked out so far, though, here? Because heaven is there when we get there, 80, 90, when we leave here. But heaven is also right here at this front table. So reap the benefits. I challenge you to reap heaven's benefits today on earth, knowing that Christ is in our heart today. And in any situation, in any tough times, at my lowest, God and Jesus are at their strongest in me. And in you too. It's a win-win. Amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> but uh, it's I've seen it today with with some friends and and most of them was taking it really well. A couple of them I'm gonna be praying for, and I'm gonna hope it didn't it doesn't do what it did to me on my grandma. And I rolled around that for twenty something years, hurting people and hurting myself first and foremost. But you know, not being there for my daughter. Uh, stealing, methane, everything that comes with the meth life. I don't even, <sighs> a lot of evil stuff, man. All because I got scared because my grandma left, thinking I was never going to see her again, you know. Or because I got, I had fear of, of, of just the dad thing and the mom thing, you know, which rolled into unforgiveness in my heart. Fear causes unforgiveness. So I had a bunch of, and if Jesus came for all forgiveness, and the minute I caught my, the minute we catch ourselves in un, any unforgiveness, we are cursed and bound until we set that at Jesus' feet. You need to know that, church. All right, I, I leave you with this question. Are you scared of death? Let me rephrase that. No, I'll keep it there. Are you scared of death? Because you know my opinion. I don't think nobody dies. You're going one place or the other. We're just leaving this body is all we're doing. But our spirit's going somewhere. And the same spirit's making me talk right now and me communicate with my Holy Spirit to, to be able to deliver a somewhat healthy message to keep my congregation lifted, my channel lifted. With great with great power comes great responsibility. So that's my job. I'm a I'm a shepherd at heart. I'm just like my big brother. Running around and stoking fires and telling them you can do this. Keep going. It is finished. It is finished. Remind the devil that it is finished. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. And you will. You put your faith in Jesus. A funeral is, Funerals can be a happy day. They can be a happy day. It's a good reminder of, of, of the way the preacher handled that today. It was a good reminder of... Whew, this is just temporary. Just temporary. Where we're going is just gonna blow our minds but you can tap into that where we're going you can tap into that today you can feel that in your heart and your mind and and have a christ-like mind and heart and, and feel heaven and feel god and feel jesus and feel holy spirit and feel like you are a son of god or a daughter of god whichever one you are you can feel that today what an awesome feeling to know that you are the creator of these birds chirping these trees around here, everything around you is the creator of, and he's our daddy, he's our father. When you come through his son, Jesus, he looks at you just like he looks at Jesus. And he loves you and he adores you. And he's waiting on you. And I challenge you at any time from this point on in life, when those days happen, those death days, 
not to look at it as, as a big old slam door shut. It's just an enemy, it's the enemy's tactic to try to scare us and fool us and get that sorrow to turn into bitterness towards God, towards our family and friends. And it's, a, it's a weapon of warfare. Fear is, and it's a giant. And it's one of Satan's favorite moves. So, open your Bibles, man. Know what's going on. Know the protection we have, the exit door we have. Because of God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father, for sending Jesus. Jesus, thank you for sending the Holy Spirit to be our comforter down here. And uh, I love you guys, man. Y'all stay pushing out there. God bless each and every one of y'all. And uh, kingdom energy only. Amen. Peace.